up? Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do a review of Epoch Cam wireless HD webcam app. As you can see right here, I'm just going to kind of show you how to find it. If you go to search, type in Epoch Cam, will be the first result. What this app is, is an app that turns your iPhone into a wireless HD web camera. So if you don't feel like going out and buying an expensive, nice webcam for your computer, and you have an iPhone, why not just use that? So you can see here the details. It's a wireless HD webcam. A little bit of information about it. It's not that big of a download. Some of the features is it says high quality real time video stream for computer. Use it with Skype, whatever. Over 20 feet wireless range, blah, blah. Basically, it's a webcam that works over your wireless internet instead of directly connecting it to your computer. Now, if we look at the reviews, we can see that there are some one and two star reviews. Surprise, surprise. Basically, most of those reviews are because you have to write a review in order to unlock some features, such as using the front camera. So even though you pay $6 for this damn app, you still have to write a review in order to use both of your cameras. It sucks but the majority of the reviews are four and five stars and we'll see what I give it after this video but after you download it and you open it up you will be greeted with a setup guide which is some slides this first one pretty much just tells you what it is webcam use it with Skype live messenger Google Hangouts YouTube whatever it's a webcam the next slide will tell you what you need to install which is the epoch cam server if you go to that URL and you download it it's basically drivers for the webcam you need those to run it, especially on a PC. The third slide you're greeted with just tells you that after you set up the wireless network on your computer and your iPhone, then you can just start using it. Now if you're confused by this, there is a setup video that you can open in YouTube, and I'm not going to bore you with uh, playing that for you. We'll just get right into downloading the drivers and setting this baby up. So this is their website, Kenoni. Great website, yeah. So you can see here they offer a few things, the Epoch Cam, which we're talking about now, the barcode reader, and the remote desktop. If you look under Epoch Cam, you'll see Download Windows Drivers, version whatever their latest version is. We just click on that, download it, open it, run it, have a next race until the end of the install, finish, just like you would install a driver for any other webcam that you buy, only this time it's for your phone. Easy enough, pretty simple. Now if you also look, you can see that they do have all their guides and everything on their website as well. So if you just click on that link, then you will have a full page of nothing but goodness. There we have the YouTube video that was also in the app. Here we've got some screenshots of the, uh, the driver program that you get with it. Now those play, stop, exit, video size, and active video size buttons are actually not anywhere to be found on the one that I downloaded. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, there's just some screenshots of the phone, some troubleshooting things if your firewall's messed up or if you don't have Bonjour running. Uh, there's what to do if you have a low Wi-Fi signal, what kind of issues that would cause, whatever. There is also a video for the Mac side of things if you need to know how to set that up. So overall I would say the documentation with this thing is pretty decent. Now once you have everything set up, then you can just go to the app on your phone, touch it, and you'll be greeted with this searching screen. You can see my phone butter is looking on the sexy bum bum network for my server app drivers we downloaded. And there we have video. Now if you see on my computer screen there, my server app is still trying to get a video feed, but there it is, it just popped up. We are now using our iPhone as a webcam, at least in the application that we downloaded from the website. Now there's a few buttons that you'll notice here in the app. First one is to switch between the front and the back camera, self-explanatory. Now you will have to write a review for the app in order to do that, which is stupid, but here we go. We get the thumbs up. It's working. Yeah, nice. Now the other button that you don't have to leave a review to use is the mirror button. Now you won't be able to notice what this is doing on the phone itself, but on whatever application you're using as a webcam. What this does is it mirrors the image back and forth. So you can kind of see that on the left side of my screen. It's just flipping the image. Now you'll also see the focus in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. If you tap once, it will focus and lock it. So if you move the camera around, it will be locked into whatever focus you locked it on the first time. Now if you just single tap somewhere, then it'll lock another focus. Oh, you coming out tonight? No, I'm making this video, what? So you can see the kitchen is blurry because we locked the focus down to the desk. 
Now, what you can do to unlock that is just double tap, and it'll change to focus continuous. So here we can move the phone or webcam, as it is now, just around the room, and it will continuously autofocus to whatever you point it at. That is pretty good, but if you're just using it on your face in front of your computer, they can get annoying with continuous focus. So locking it to your face is probably a good idea. However, if you're using the back camera, it can get difficult to reach your finger around and focus it while it's attached to something. Now, now that last part you just saw was me using the last button, which was the flash. That is obviously self-explanatory. Turn your flash on or off if you want to. Now, also what you just saw was the menu that you can go back to at any time by pressing the little information button and you can get back to the guide video, the guide slides, or you can see other apps that these people have put out and maybe download those. Now enough about how to set up and what the app does. Let's get down to using it with something like Skype. So you're going to want to set it up in Skype the same way you would do any other webcam you have. So you'll just go to video settings and in your select webcam drop down menu you should have all your other webcam options as well as one called Epoch Cam. So if you just click on that then it will get a feed from your phone and start using this app and your phone as your webcam. Very simple. If it doesn't show up just restart Skype and it should show up. I actually had to do that. But once it shows up and you have it selected, save those settings and then you can Skype using your iPhone as you can see right here having a nice Skype call going on and it actually looks pretty good. If I didn't have crap internet then the other side would be able to see me a lot clearer than with my normal webcam. So I would rate this definitely five stars for use with Skype. Now obviously your phone didn't come with a stand or anything so I recommend using this it's called the pint glass capo stack of cash combo what I've got right here is a normal pint glass with a guitar capo holding the phone to it and a wad of cash controlling the angle So right there there's the phone there's the wad of cash and the guitar capo and pint glass so enough about the good let's get to some of the issues that I had with it the first one is that it works fine if you have airplay running or if your screen is on now like you see here I'm gonna tap on the app it's gonna find the video feed and it's gonna start up on my monitor now, this is all fine and great working awesomely but the problem with this is while you're using it if for some reason you lock your phone or your screen shuts off so right now I'm just going to lock the phone as soon as you do this your video feed will freeze so unless you have airplay running to something like reflector like I was using in this video then if your screen shuts off then that kills your feed now it doesn't you can't just turn the phone back on and get your feed right back like I'm about to do just unlock the phone it's going back as you can see I've got video on the phone but the desktop will not reconnect what you have to do is exit out of the app go back to the home screen re-tap on the app, start it back up, let it find it again, and then your feed will start. So this is definitely a downside if your screen shuts off or if you lock your phone. Like I said, the, the stream will stop when your phone screen goes off. So what you're going to want to do if you plan on using this regularly is go to your settings, go to general, and then scroll down to auto lock. Now this is a setting you're going to want to change to uh, never if you plan on using this as your webcam regularly. This will make it to where your screen never shuts off so therefore you will never lose your video feed. Now also like I said if you're using AirPlay to stream to something like Reflector and you want to do that while you're using it then that has no issues. Now they mentioned that this thing works up to 20 feet away but I found that it obviously works anywhere that your Wi-Fi signal will take it so one of the great uses about this app would be if you're on Skype and you want to show your friends how to make a nice uh, Red Bull vodka you can take your iPhone with you to the kitchen you can't really do that with a normal webcam you have to have a cord long enough to do it but with this one you just take it around plop it down in your kitchen show your friend how to make a mean vodka Red Bull concoction and whatever else if you want to show off your new house you just walk around the house with your phone skype's running on your desktop 
it's actually pretty cool. It's like having a laptop without having one. So I would say that I recommend this app pretty well. It does everything that it says it will. Um, it works as a webcam. There is a learning curve kind of setting it up with the drivers, learning that your screen can't be off for it to work and yeah, just little things like that. But once you actually get it up and running, it does work as it says. And right now this video that I'm showing is actually being recorded from my desktop. It's not like this is an iPhone video. This is actually the recording of the driver app on my desktop while I walk around my house. So as you can see, there was like little to no quality degradation or skipping or really anything. So I'm going to have to go ahead and give this app a four out of five stars. I had to rate it before I could actually test it. So my first rating was a two out of five just because I had to rate it before I could use the front camera. I think that's shitty. I paid six dollars for the damn thing. I shouldn't have to write a crappy review just to use the other half of my phone's camera capabilities. That is retarded. But like I said, I'm going to stick by the four out of five on this one. It's fairly simple to use once you get it going, but once you do, it does everything that it says it will and it does it very nicely as long as you have a strong Wi-Fi signal. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little different from the crap I normally do, but I needed this because I plan on doing another video and I felt like why not review this while actually getting it going. So like I said, hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.